Understanding Prostate Cancer. This is one of a series of cancer videos found on the website aboutcancer.com. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer in men. The risk is 1 in 5 to 1 in 6 and the median age of diagnosis is about 67. 22 percent of the men, however, will be diagnosed in their 50s and even 3 percent younger than that. Before deciding on treatment, it's critical to understand the anatomy, the stage, the PSA, and the Gleason score. Because of its critical location, close to the bladder and the rectum, treatment of prostate can be quite difficult. There is a wrapper or capsule that can often be invaded by the cancer, as well as other structures, such as the seminal vesicles. The nerves that affect impotence and incontinence are on the back lateral side of the prostate. There are lymph nodes around the prostate that can be invaded in patients with a high Gleason score prostate. It's worth noting the cross-sectional anatomy view through the prostate, the proximity between the prostate and the bladder and the rectum. It's important to understand this appearance when looking at a CAT scan or an MRI. This is a CAT scan showing the typical position of a prostate between the bladder and the rectum. An MRI will show this quite well the pubic bone seen here, prostate, and the rectum. MRIs will show the internal anatomy better than a CAT scan, and sometimes the cancer will be visible on an MRI. The MRI will show the seminal vesicles and bladder and other structures that surround the prostate quite well. The staging system uh, reflects the extent of spread or growth of the cancer, similar to other cancers. It's worth noting that most of the patients with a low PSA and a low Gleason have cancer cells in the gland that are too small to feel or see on a CAT scan. If the urologist cannot feel a lump or growth in the prostate and does a biopsy only because of an elevated PSA, this will be stage 1 or T1C. This is the most common group seen today. If the urologist feels a lump or growth in the prostate and it's still confined to the prostate, this would be a so-called T2 or stage 2. Sometimes on a CT or an MRI, you can see the cancer pushing through the capsule or the wrapper that surrounds the prostate, shown here on an MRI. If the cancer spreads even further to the structures above the prostate, such as the seminal vesicles, this would be T3. This can be seen on a CAT scan, such as this. The left seminal vesicle was invaded. And this patient's CAT scan shows very extensive cancer involving his seminal vesicles. The final stage, or stage 4, uh, shows evidence of spread to lymph nodes or bone. This CAT scan shows extensive lymph node metastases for patient with advanced prostate cancer. It's spread to the lymph nodes in the pelvis and abdomen. This is a bone scan, a sodium fluoride PET scan, that shows stage 4 prostate cancer with bone metastases. This table summarizes the staging system based on the T, or tumor category, as well as N for lymph nodes and M for metastases. The T and M are combined then with the Gleason and the PSA to put the patient into different staging or treatment groups. This will be discussed again later. The cure rate is worse the higher the advanced stage. If the cancer has gotten into the seminal vesicles or lymph nodes, the cure rate is quite poor. The next thing is the significance of the PSA. The higher the PSA level prior to starting therapy, the worse the outcome. With surgery, once the PSA gets higher than 10, the cure rate drops significantly as shown in these survival curves after surgery. And similar with radiation, once the PSA gets over 10, the relapse rate after radiation is much worse. With radiation or surgery, the PSA should drop to a very low level usually zero after surgery and less than one after radiation. Finally, the Gleason score, or a measure of how mutated or malignant the cells are, it is an important predictor of outcome. The pathology report will describe the histology, use the adenocarcinoma, the number of cores involved, or the volume. The Gleason score is usually two numbers added together, and other things such as perineural invasion. Cancer cells are normal cells that have mutated, if they almost look normal, they're called well differentiated. Well differentiated or low grade has a much better cure rate than moderate or poorly differentiated. The Gleason system, the pathologist scores the cells from 1 to 5. 
The first number he writes down is the most common pattern. Grade 1 is almost normal appearing and slow growing. The second number he writes down is the second most common pattern. And these numbers are added together. The lowest score is a 2. The worst would be a 10, 5 plus 5. The Gleason scoring system is fairly reliable among pathologists. The higher the Gleason score, the lower the cure rate. This is with surgery. Radiation has a similar outcome. However, with high Gleason cancers with radiation, adding hormone therapy, the red column, can improve the results, at least with radiation patients. If you go to the website about cancer, we have a number of prostate cancer calculators. You can use these to plug in the PSA, digital exam, family history, and calculate the odds of the biopsy showing cancer. Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York has a number of calculators or nomograms that predict the odds of spread or recurrence based on PSA, Gleason, and stage. Johns Hopkins has the Parton tables and similar calculators. Again, we'll calculate the risk of spread or recurrence. And Duke has a series of calculators that can be used as well. The current staging system generally groups patients into low, intermediate, or high risk. This is a system used by the NCCN to make treatment recommendations. All the details can be found on the website aboutcancer.com, as well as other videos that help explain how prostate cancer patients can make choices on treatment.